The K61 is a 60% RGB keyboard with a full translucent frosted frame. And if you do want to start dabbling in custom configurations or keyboard upgrading, the K61 is also hot swappable. Yo guys, what's the deal? It's me Blassin and today I'm going to be unboxing, sound test and reviewing the Gamma K K61 60% mechanical keyboard. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing now and turn that notification bell because there's quite a bit of y'all who like these videos but aren't subscribed, so join the community. Opening the box, Gamma K matches the aesthetics by wrapping the board in a frosted plastic covering. Inside you get a manual, also a bag that contains a key cap puller, switch removal, and surprisingly, a keyboard cleaning nylon brush. And last but not least, the USB-A to USB-C cable. The K61 is a 60% keyboard with the standard ANSI layout with no dedicated arrow keys, but it is still accessible by pressing function key and WASD. The keycaps are double shot ABS, however, the mold is yellow, resulting in a yellow hue on each letter or symbol of the keycap, unlike the ANSI Pro 2 stock caps being clear. The font is very clean and legible, but noticeably thinner than the and Pro or the Huntsman Mini font. And as for the construction, the keyboard is held by 13 screws which loosen the three-piece frame. The frame consists of an acrylic piece which is cut out for the USB-C port. This is sandwiched between a top plate that holds the switches and the bottom plate which puts everything back together. With the PCB exposed, we can see that it is a 5-pin compatible PCB. It's equipped with RGB on front and on back and manufactured by a Chinese company called Hongxi Design. Instead of flip-up feet like most boards or an angled frame, it only has two rubber feet in the back which are larger and two smaller feet in the front which of course are smaller. And lastly, it does have a USB-C port for connectivity but cable compatibility is limited due to the recessed access of the frame. As for the switches, I personally like clicky so I wanted to get the clicky blues, however you can get this board in black, brown, red, or yellow Gateron switches. Since this keyboard is hot swappable, meaning that you can remove the switches to whichever switch that you prefer, lubricating these switches and the stabilizers is very possible on this board. These switches are pre-looped, but I recommend adding more, especially on the stabilizers as you can see the light lube. And even though that these switches are a three pin design, the PCB supports five pin switches as well. Now I'm not gonna lie guys, actually removing the switches from this keyboard was not easy at all and took me a while to figure out a good method so I didn't damage any switches, but I did, I damaged quite a few. And the switch puller was not easy to use given that it was metallic, very small, and would slip out of my hands. So for the sound test, I'm gonna be doing a comparison between two keyboards, both of them clicky, the K61 with the Gateron Blue switches, and the Razer Huntsman Mini with the Razer Purple Optimechanic clicky switches.
probably the best feature of this keyboard and what stood out to me the most and the reason why I wanted this keyboard was the RGB. RGB not only shines on top but underneath to spread the light and illuminate the entire frosted frame. Lighting can be controlled by toggling the left or right control key while holding the function key. One thing to note is that if you want to control the outer ring of the keyboard it's going to be on the left control and if you want to control the inside of the RGB it's going to be the right control. And if you want a specific color, hold function, press the space bar, and then choose any color on the keyboard. Now there is a software, but it isn't anything great, but you get on-screen customability and you can choose specific colors to match your RGB setup perfectly. And if you are a whiz kid, you can set macro keys yourself. Overall, this is a great RGB focused board with the high aesthetic rating. It has custom keyboard influences like hot swap customability with five pin options, but heavy on the entry level side. One of the biggest flaws is the case design because now being three pieces, you have weak areas and it bends and doesn't feel very sturdy compared to a board that actually has a real case. And like I mentioned, removing the switches was not easy at all. And if you've never touched anything or done any DIY projects, you might have a worse experience than I did. But I can be very forgiven given the fact that this keyboard is only $60 and you can tinker with it and have a little bit of fun and learn and grow off of it. Now, maybe if this keyboard was $80 or even $100, this would be a different conversation that I would be having. But lastly, as for the switches, they felt great. There wasn't anything that stood out. The only thing was that they are five grams heavier than my Razer keyboard. So when I did start playing on it, I did have to give a break after 10 to 15 minutes because it was hurting. Now, I'm not weak or anything. It's just I've been so used to lighter switches. But after a few days of playing, I got used to and when I went back to my original keyboard, it was uh, very different. I was smashing the crap out of that. So guys, that's it. That's what wraps up this entire review, unboxing and sound test. If you do have any questions, remember, please drop them down below. And if you guys are not subscribed, it would mean so much to me if you did so. And help out the algorithm, like the video so other people can learn and figure out if this keyboard is for them. But in the meantime, guys, you know what to do. Game up, stream up. Peace.